The introduction of Smart Ping, along with changes to Tarek, Xin Zhao, Kale, and more in this episode of the Patch Preview. Hi Summoners, and welcome to the Patch Preview. I'm your host, Tamit, and with me this week I have game designers Brakhar and Feral Pony, who are going to be talking us through the changes coming in the next update for League of Legends. What's going on, guys? Doing well, thanks. Not much, man. How's it going? We'll kick this off with Smart Ping, which is an addition to our existing ping system that will give players more tactical options when communicating with their teammates. Brakhar, what's Smart Ping all about? With Smart Ping, we wanted to give players more ways to communicate with their teammates, especially in situations where there isn't enough time to type. To facilitate this, we added in four new ping types. Danger, Enemy Missing, On My Way, and Assist Me. In addition to providing normal visual and audio cues, these new pings will also place an easily identifiable waypoint on the ground. For example, with the On My Way ping, there is a smaller arrow attached to it that rotates relative to where the pinging champion is. So you might see an On My Way ping appear in your lane, and you'll be able to instantly tell where your teammates are coming from, including the path that they're taking on the minimap. Players can access these additional pings through our new radial menu by holding down the associated hotkey and left-clicking anywhere on the map. A menu will pop up wherever your mouse is, and by flicking your cursor in a direction, the specialized ping will appear. If you do this on the minimap, a scaled-down menu will appear with the same functionality. Overall, this new functionality won't interfere with players who are used to the current system, but adaptive players should appreciate the additional tactical communication that comes with SmartPing. Looking forward to seeing SmartPing in action. Thanks for stopping by, Brakhar. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, dude. Moving away from SmartPing, another big change in this patch is Tarek, who's going to be getting a completely reworked passive in addition to some modifications to Shatter. Feral Pony, walk us through this. Well, right now, Tarek is the go-to pick for players who want to really bully their lane early before transitioning into late game with powerful aura effects. With these changes, we wanted to accomplish two things. One, tone down Tarek's heavy early game pressure and durability, and two, expand his late game activity with more aggressive actions and opportunities. We're pursuing our first goal by taking away the flat armor aura bonus of Shatter. Tarek is a strong in lane because he brings so much additional tankiness and durability to both himself and his lane partner. So we've adjusted Shatter's passive aura from a flat armor bonus to an aura that scales with Tarek's total armor. The end result is this should tone down some of Tarek's early game pressure without changing the goals of him being a support player. In terms of expanding Tarek's late game activity, we've remade Gemcraft so that Tarek's auto attacks now deal bonus magic damage equal to a percentage of his maximum mana. This new passive, in addition to Shatter's active damage now scaling with Tarek's armor, should add more itemization options and offensive depth into the late game while giving Tarek a real reason to wait in the combat hammer swing it. We're making some adjustments to Zen Zhao, who's been a dominant force in both solo queue and competitive play. What's happening here? The thing about Zin was that thanks to his three talent strike, he was able to reduce his cooldowns to the point where he could chain his crowd control abilities indefinitely while getting his ultimate up just a little bit too quickly. We still like how these abilities interact, but with certain items, Zin Zhao was able to keep his enemies perpetually slowed with audacious charge while being able to use his ultimate with impunity. As a result of these observations, we've increased the cooldown of audacious charge and crescent swing so that Zin players will be a little bit more mindful of their abilities rather than just throwing them out whenever they can. Along that same line of thought, we've also toned down the base damage of Audacious Charge and Crescent Sweep. For such a tanky character who brings high crowd control and sustain damage, Zin's base ability damage was just dealing too much upfront burst to manage, so we need to do something about that. Kale has become quite popular as a mid lane AP champion who can outbully your opponents throughout the game while still offering high utility with their ultimate. What are we changing here? So right now, Kale is extremely strong across the board with her utility heals, a great ultimate, and tons of sustained damage from Reckoning and Righteous Fury. Ultimately, our approach was to remove some of the invisible power of her kit, most of which stems from her Reckoning ability and its damage amplification. Going in, our goal was to make Reckoning have a higher recognizable impact as a spell, while also promoting Kale's great utility as a unique strength. Now Reckoning no longer has damage amplification, and the slow duration has been reduced to tone down her lane presence. In exchange, we've upped Reckoning's missile speed and the slow amount at higher levels to give Kale a little more battlefield control. In the end, Kale still has a lot to offer her team, especially with her game-changing ultimate intervention, but these changes should bring down her sustained damage and lane presence down to a more manageable level. 
Nidalee is losing her bonus armor and bonus magic resistance in Cougar form this patch. What was the reasoning behind that? Nidalee's aspect of the Cougar was intended to be a high damage form that could jump in and out of the fight thanks to her increased mobility. Giving free defensive stats on aspect of the Cougar muddies the core gameplay themes of her Cougar form, so we wanted to bring it back to its roots. We've also increased the AP ratio on Swipe in an effort to better communicate the offensive role of her Cougar form and to entice the AP Nidalee players to jump into the fray from time to time rather than just chuck spears all day. Our big item change this patch is Blade of the Rune King and on a smaller note, Bilgewater Cutlass. What are these changes and why are we making them? The main thing we did with Bilgewater Cutlass was to improve its early game utility to create a better window of opportunity for use. Some of the active power of Bilgewater Cutlass has been reduced to reflect its lower cost, but now players have the choice to pick up an early Cutlass if they want to take full advantage of its high sustain and unique active ability. For Blade of the Ruined King, however, we took a harder look at what we really wanted from it. Our initial problem with Blade of the Ruined King was that it occupied a very muddled position as a high sustained damage item, but most players opted for Bloodthirster instead for the same properties. By adding in bonus attack speed, we're hoping to move Blade of the Ruined King away from being a major attack damage item and positioning instead within the attack speed slot. Now players will have a little more room for choice and counterplay in choosing their attack speed items. Do I get the Static Shiv for farming Split Push, Phantom Dancer for high single target damage, or Blade of the Ruined King for shredding high health targets? We really like offering more choices here. All right, thanks guys. That's it for this episode of the League of Legends patch preview. Please subscribe to the Riot Games YouTube channel above and leave us your comment just below the video.